Hey guys, so I'm finally back and working on this project. I actually brought home an ATV. Uh, it's actually not an ATV, it's a forklift seat that will be my rear passenger uh, seat. Um, it's getting a whole new cushion and that will be a whole separate video. But finally back here, so last time I left off is I have everything rebuilt in these and here. There's no play whatsoever. I put my spacer into this coil here. Um, the only one I had left here was this one that still had a little bit of play. And uh, I do have these bushings. So now the, even though I have the new sleeve in there, uh, my old bushing, which actually I just drilled out um, because it doesn't just slip out. <clears throat> it did have play, so that'll eliminate that. That will button this whole side up. Uh, this other side will be a lot easier to do because um, you'll just be able to repeat the same steps I had here. Uh, I have my coil compressors still that I'm borrowing, so get that. Get this rear end buttoned up today, I hope. Uh, put my front springs back on onto the new lifted um, area and we'll go from there all right so i've just completed the rest of the rear suspension here solid three hours of work uh just to give you a little idea all these baggies here were all various parts uh, you know things like bolts and the o-rings that go on them all the seals and washers and cup washers and shafts and you name it. Uh, so that was a ton of parts. Somewhat time consuming, you know, bushings and this and that. Um, you know, earlier I had the issue of trying to get these main um, shafts right here, sort of, well, the bolt that would go through it hammered out because there's a step, if you can see that, just from the, the use. Um, and that's the one that was sitting right in here where the shock is always you know applying pressure non-stop um, so anyways I got those hammered out eventually I had to heat them up the torch to uh, get them going but cut them out everything's been replaced you know brand new the rear suspension is completely solid um, and then in the meantime I also put in these uh, <clears throat> spacers like I said for the preload for the lift um, I sort of thought about mounting the uh, shock there's holes up so you can see the hole right here there's one on the other side as well I thought about mount just mounting it in this larger hole sort of up closer this way you know and basically changing your angle by a few degrees um, that would also, you know, give to the lift, but those holes are a little bit larger diameter than the bolt holes provided, so I decided not to mess with that. Yeah, so now I'm going to throw the rear wheels on, torque it all down, um, and then uh, probably install the front springs, front of the suspension, and then one of my final tasks is to put the rear master cylinder on for the brakes uh, because that one is completely shot so yeah stay tuned for more okay next day here so i've got all this wrapped up um i'm in the middle of removing the rear brake master cylinder for the brand new one you want to get uh-huh um and then today I decided to grab my winch um, that I'll be installing, 2,500 pound winch. I went ahead and just zip tied all along the the wire that goes, you know, from the winch to the battery in the back. Um, decided to zip tie it all together so it just stays together as it should. Um, clip all those uh, zip ties, um, and I just thought that. Before I get my plastics on, I'll have all the wiring through to the front where the winch will be. Um, 
So, gotta still install the radiator. Uh, and today I'll be installing the front shocks up to my new uh, points here for lifting it, um, which just changes the angle basically. So, we'll see. I'm sure, it'll do something. Anyways, let's get on with it. Okay, so I put the uh, wiring through um, where I believe is the best route for it to go. Uh, and I drilled um, a hole right here in the plastic where the wires come through to the battery. Um, they'll all be connected eventually. So there's that hole right there. Um, and you've got the uh, 50 amp fuse thing here on the positive. Um, I electric taped it all around so that none of that is exposed. Um, and then, you know, I believe none of this wiring will be vibrating and rubbing where it shouldn't be. Um, and then this part will just be attached eventually when I get that part figured out. Uh, while I was back here, I also um, stitched up these cracks here with zip ties. And there was one more back here. Um, so, getting all that done, little things here and there. I also remembered to open this up and uh, spray some air filter oil on my brand new foam air filter that was, you know, dry and in that new state that you usually don't come pre oiled, and you really want to oil it so that the dust sticks to that and doesn't, you know, possibly come through the foam. All right, so guys, uh, so now I'm getting really excited. Um, I uh, changed out the master cylinder for the rear brakes here. Uh, looks way better, flushed it all out, uh, bled it with uh, this thing right here. It's got this magnet on it, I really like it. So I was able to just magnetize it to the frame. Um, yeah, so then I also got my front springs mounted here. Now they're in this lifted position, and uh, I dropped the rear of the bike and definitely seems higher. So it's, that's a good thing there. Um, you know, like I said, I got my wiring through nice and clean. Um, I'm about to bleed my front brakes, I just did my alignment. Um, so I have my straps here holding my handlebars um, from the tip of my handlebars to certain points there um, on the frame they look you know equal uh, anyways we'll test out the alignment see how that goes I've heard it can get a little tricky um, now the main excitement right now is I finally got the gauge cluster opened up where the plastic was still attached here in the rear and it's almost like you, you're not meant to take it apart um, but I got it apart I had to break some plastic to do it here and here because um, I don't know how to get to the screws from the other side uh, anyways I will be taking this to work and I will make a custom housing here for the rear of it seal it all off um, for the wiring it has this thick grommet here uh, that slips inside of this so I'll take this with me as well and I'll be able to mount it on the rear of the metal housing um, yeah so be able to clean that up and close off the electronics because they were all cracked open and exposed to potential weather and you know anyways let's start bleeding these brakes all right I I uh, bled the brakes uh, best thing to, to do was remove the wheels uh, put your bleeding hose on here and you got your eight millimeter in this case on this bleeder valve uh, the rear was was a 10 millimeter but anyways um, yeah without the wheels made it very easy um, and then uh, I remembered I have these aluminum machined plugs that need to 
cover these holes but first since I had my uh, brakes bled um, you can't see now but the dual piston setup that's in here uh, they're sort of adjustable so that you can bring the pads closer um, I guess to the uh, to the drum um, and so you just follow the arrow whichever way the arrow is pointing uh, and you use a flat screwdriver and you adjust it accordingly and you just kind of do one and then you make sure that your drum is still movable um, Uh, and basically I brought it to the point where it wasn't movable with my hand and then I brought it back one notch until it let go uh, and I did that on both so you just twist it and you find the other one um, so now I'm ready to put the plug back on this side and then I'll go ahead and do that same thing on the other side um, and my brakes are complete alright guys so you can even uh do this as long as you can get your plugs off you can do this with the wheels still on uh, there's that arrow I'm talking about and there's that notched thing that you you know pry towards the arrow um, and you move it over here same thing on this side and basically you know you want to get it to right where it's just just starts to be free play um, Basically the same thing as like on bicycles you have that little ring on the brake cable that you spin farther out that brings the brakes closer together. Um, <clears throat> so it's like the pre-tension before the hydraulic pistons are there to engage and really apply the brake pressure. But yeah, so that's it. Now I'm just going to pop this second cap back on. <clears throat> Should be done from there. Okay, now that's on, it's super flush. Now my brakes won't get destroyed like it did before because they are completely closed off as they should be. And the other thing I noticed once I adjusted those dials, even though I had my brakes bled, uh, now this engages like almost instantly. You can feel it as to before it would have to travel all the way back closer towards the handlebar before the brakes engaged. Um, so that's that fine tuning portion of it. Um, then I have my brand new rear brake cable that I don't remember if I videoed or not, but uh, there it is. Now that's working. I got my parking brake. So basically, you can say I've gone through the whole bike. Um, I'll just start reassembling everything else now. Cushy. Hi guys, welcome to Bike or Awesome Fun. Bye. <laughs> so he's imitating me how I usually start my YouTube videos. Hey guys, then it's back here. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I got one last thing on here. Um, I got these hand guards on here, Spend which drama. I've had drama. for years and years and years probably like seven years uh, my friend Dennis F um, actually gifted them to me a while back but I never got a dirt bike to put them on to I don't know what they came off of but I know they're a service or a service however you say it made in Italy um, and actually they bolted right in as if they would fit a Honda but, you know, most of this kind of stuff looks generic anyways. Um, so, uh, they're on. They'll guard my hands, and I like them. Um, yeah. So now it's time to call it a day. Work on some uh, other things tomorrow at work, like the metal uh, housing for the digital, digital gauge that goes here. Um, and then just start throwing the plastics on, the racks. Um, I'll end up, you know, custom fabbing a bumper. Uh, I'll have my radiator re relocation kit finally going on. Uh, then I'll be able to get this thing out of here and start cleaning up. All right, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for your patience for all the time that I have not been uploading. 
such as life, such are priorities. Thanks, guys.